Hey, so Ultimate Guide subscriber Katie, hi Katie, asked a question on the structure and function of proteins video. She said she was a bit confused about the ionic bonds and disulfide bridges and what they do inside of a, a protein. So let's rewind a little bit. We've got the primary structure, which is our sequence of amino acids like train carriages forming a train. Obviously, it's going to be probably thousands of amino acids long. They're joined by peptide bonds. So that's the bond that holds the amino acids together in the chain. We're going to skip over secondary structure, alpha helices, beta helices. They never ask questions about that really anyway. So we've got our primary structure and it's all got charges on like There's bits of negative, bits of positive kind of floating around different R groups. And so if you imagine this being a bit like an old bit of VCR tape, that brown tape or cassette tape, it's all got these magnetic charges on it. Well, if you let go of it, it all starts coiling up and twisting. The positives are attracted to the negatives. The negatives repel away from other negatives. And we end up with this like big ball of tape mess on the floor. Well, if we imagine our polypeptide chain as being that big ball of tape mess, then we need to, to give it any sort of regimented structure, any like strength to it, we actually start bonding inside. Once it's done, it's kind of folding in the tertiary structure, of the 3D shape. If you've got an R group here and an R group here, and these kind of want to swap electrons, then you're going to get an ionic bond. You don't need to know about any of the details. If you've got a cysteine and a cysteine, that's where a disulfide bridge forms. Obviously, a bit of sulfur is involved in that. Again, you don't need to know the details, but those bonds in the tertiary structure, once your primary structure and secondary structure is all folded up, it's in a loose shape. Most of that's held together by hydrogen bonds, which are really weak. So these disulfide bridges and the ionic bonds basically come and shore up or like really cement in a few select places. There's these really tough bonds, which gives our structure to our 3D shape, our overall resting shape of that polypeptide. So those bonds are basically instrumental in holding together the shape that you get once it's all sort of folded up. And then obviously once you've locked in those pieces, it can't really unravel because you've got pieces on the inside which are like locked onto each other and they obviously can't then go back to the place that they started in. So I hope that helps. If not, let me know in the comments. Do that on the course in Taylor Tudors and the Academy there, not on YouTube. That is, this is just for a place where I'm going to be answering some comments. If you're watching this, you don't have a clue what I'm referencing here. I've written a whole series of tutorials that cover the entire new A-level biology specification. They're all beautifully organized and really nicely explained. They go through the entire course. So if you're looking at, you want a little bit of extra help, maybe you're thinking about getting a tutor, something like that, check it out. There's a free trial. Go and have a look and yeah, enjoy it.